uh, uh, Jamie, I just read out what Rio had to say about the club, the treatment of De Gea, and it seems strange, doesn't it? I think there was an offer there, he accepted it, and then they changed their mind. Yeah, it is a little bit odd what's going on there, considering, you know, today's the last day of June as well, so basically his contract is up today. Mm. So something, something has to give. And you'd have to say that if he does now stay... That David De Gea at United, you know, if he, if he signs whatever reduced contract is on the table and the club also sign it, then it's going to be a little bit of a cloud, really. And, you know, as you quoted Rio there, having been, you know, he's the last last sort of standing member of the last Premier League title winning side of 12 13. You know, he's been there 12 years. It's a little bit, um, you know, they've had a whole year, if you like, a whole season yeah. to decide this with regards to De Gea's future. So it's a little bit odd. What about um, who would they go for, Jamie? If he if he did move on, and now who would be Manchester United's number one? Obviously, yeah, they have to go and sign someone, don't they? Well, and this is the other thing. I think it, it, it's looking like Anana, the international um, mm. goalkeeper, is the favourite. But you've got to get in a number one, haven't you? Really, before you let a, a, a keeper of David De Gea's sort of experience and stature. I know he's got mistakes. And I was reading this morning, I think he's made 17 mistakes in the Premier League that have cost goals. But if you then think about how many games he's played in the Premier League, I think it's 400 plus. I don't know, is that a lot? I'm not so sure. I've got to be honest, I am divided about his sort of, you know, is he good enough? I'm not too sure if, if now he's maybe over the, his actual peak. But then you say, well, who who do you get in? They've, they've blocked the move of Tom Heaton going out of the club because of what's going on here. Yeah. It's a little bit of a, a pickle that Ten Hag, yet another one that United got themselves into, which he could really do without, to be honest. So what about Mason Mount then, Jamie, coming in? Will that go down well, the United faithful? Is is he um, not the final piece in the jigsaw, but yeah. United have to start challenging, don't they? They, they? they do, Alan. And, you know, I've been on your brilliant show many a time over the years saying maybe it's this summer. And I think Mason Mount is a good signing for, for the... Um, for the price, you know, in sort of today's price, it's 55 plus 5 million if they reach sort of uh, particular achievements as a football team. I mean, you know, we shouldn't forget he did create the winner in the Champions League final for Chelsea, you know, when they beat City 2021. You know, he set up Havertz, so he's got big big game experience, he's got that on his CV. I think it's a good signing. I don't think it's a sort of, how can I say, it's not a transformative signing, as you, you, you're sort of saying, it's not the final piece of the jigsaw, but I think it's a good piece of business. But the thing, or, or the issue United have is they've only really got at the moment until they start selling players, well, money for sort of one and a half major signings, if I can, if I can put, that, put it that way. You understand what I mean? So yeah. It's not going to be Harry Kane at the moment, but that sort of blockbuster fee. And so, yeah, you go for this, the side. They, yeah, they need a central striker. They need an elite number nine because... You know, Rashford had a very good season, 30 goals scored, the first time anyone's done that for United since Van Persie when they won the title, but he's not really a centre-forward, doesn't fancy himself there. Then you look at the rest of the team, well, the goalkeeper, right, which is what we're talking about as well. Maybe a centre-back if Maguire leaves, would have McTominay and Fred might go, that would raise a bit of cash, but you do go through their recent sell, sales and they haven't really raised a lot of money. They haven't got a great track record, yeah. which is another issue for Ten Hag. Then you've got the ownership, so whether they could actually challenge seriously next season, I don't know. It is, where are we now? As I say, it's the last day of June. We've got a couple of months where maybe, hopefully, they can get two or three big players in. And, Jamie, sure. the other side of Manchester, uh, any any news there for Manchester City, who they'll be signing for? What a season they had to win the treble. There's not a lot of positions that can strengthen them because it's got so many good players. But there'll be a couple of leaving, I should imagine. So who would they be looking at? Man City, well. Pep Guardiola. Yeah, it's interesting, Ray, because they've got Kovacic in and they've also got Calvin Phillips obviously still there. Mm. He, said he, doesn't, he, he said he doesn't want to um, leave. And Pep Guardiola always says, you know, as long as players want to stay, uh, it, it, that, 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 that's fine by him. I mean, I think maybe someone like I, I'm Eric Laporte might leave, the, the centre-back, um, who didn't really play... Uh, last season, uh, you know, I think he, he himself is considering whether to leave. But, uh, you know, you, you just sort of said it perfectly then. They, they might add one or two. But if you're at Manchester City, and even a sort of, I could put it this way, a squad player who doesn't always play, well, you know, you're going to win things, aren't you? Because they win things and they just won the treble. So, you know, this Declan Rice interest that, 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 that they, they sort of registered a, an interest, you know, and then, then pulled out, I think that, 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 that sort of shows how healthy a squad uh, they've got at the moment that they don't really need to, you know, Gundogan's left, but I would say Kovacic has mm. uh, replaced him. So it's going to be a relatively serene summer uh, over at, uh, at Manchester City, I suggest, for all the obvious reasons. You know, you know, they've just won the treble and 
you'd say they'd be favourites, certainly, for the, the league again next season. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Uh, Jamie, thank you. Uh, have a great weekend, mate. Thank you. Jamie Jackson there from The Guardian. Um, you, you're right, there's no rush. Look, Phil Foden, you know, Phil will be saying, we're going to be going, uh, he'll be saying, right, here we go, I'm going to get more gameplay. And also Declan Rice, I mean, John Stones, look at the job he's oh, done fantastic. when he moves into midfield. So fantastic. do you really need Declan Rice and spend all your money on well, one player? Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.